In the year 325, in the depths of ancient Turkey, a chapter unfolded that would define the eternal destiny of Christianity. In Nicaea, under the imposing shadow of an empire, more than 300 bishops gathered in an unprecedented meeting that would seal the soul of the Catholic Church. This first ecumenical council was not only the crucible where Arianism, a belief that challenged the divinity of Christ, was condemned, but also the moment where the creed was born, an echo of faith that resonates to our days. Orchestrated by Constantine the Great, this meeting not only forged the foundations of the Catholic faith, but also indissolubly intertwined the fate of the church and state, weaving a plot that would change the course of Europe. But behind this monumental event, a mystery hides, the true faith of Constantine, the Titan who, with an iron hand, guided the destiny of Christianity. In this fabric of divinity and power, figures emerge that capture our imagination. From the legendary Santa Claus, who moved by divine passion, rose against heresy, to Miletius of Lycopolis, whose story is intertwined with the very origins of Arianism. But what hidden truths lie behind the walls of Nicaea? What debates shrouded in shadows never saw the light? Today, we delve into the depths of this sacred mystery, exploring the dark corners of faith and power. But be careful, for in the history of Nicaea, among whispers of faith and echoes of heresy, a somber reminder is hidden. The most sacred truths are often found in the deepest shadows. Dive with us into this journey to the heart of Christianity. But remember, fear and faith walk hand in hand in the delicate dance of history. Heroes with scars, bishops with mutilated hands, empty eyes and limping. They were not warriors, they were martyrs of faith who defied power. 318, an army of the brave gathered in Nicaea to defend the truth. Constantine, the enigma, an emperor with two faces. Under his reign, Christianity flourished, but he also stained his hands with blood. A year after the council, he murdered his wife and son, a victim of paranoia and ambition. At the epic council of Nicaea, convened by Constantine the Great himself, bishops marked by faith and sacrifice, lost eyes, mutilated hands, ride in public dignity into history. Theodoret of Cyrus, a fifth century chronicler, recounts this assembly of the brave, a meeting where the emperor sought not only to witness the union of indomitable spirits, but also to forge lasting peace among them heroism, faith, and reconciliation in a legendary encounter. A crucial council, Nicaea marked a before and after. The divinity of Christ was defined, the Nicene Creed was established, and the unity of the church was forged. But the path was not easy. The shadow of fear and violence loomed over the assembly. At the heart of the faith, 318 bishops gathered, provided by royal mandate for an unprecedented meeting. Among them, figures of unbreakable resistance. Paul of Neo Caesarea, whose hands bore the marks of oppression, braves who saw the world with one eye less, and those whom cruelty robbed of their walk. Paphnutius of Egypt stood out, a symbol of survival. His assembly, narrated by Theodoret, becomes a testament to sacrifice and a living testimony of the indomitable spirit that guides their path. Heroes of faith, united in adversity and triumph, an assembly marked by martyrdom forged under the shadow and light of Constantine the Great, whose acts of power would resonate beyond the Council of Nicaea. With Hosius of Cordoba leading, this meeting became the foundation of ecumenical Christianity, but the personal drama of the emperor weaves a story of contrasts. The same leader who united the faith, wrapped in family tragedy, sacrificed love for ambition. Constantine, father and emperor, whose life intertwines with myths and truths, from his first son Crispus, fruit of a love perhaps not sanctified, to the dark vertex of power where even the closest were not safe. A legacy of faith, power, and paradoxes. After a turn of fate and heart, Constantine IV changed partners, uniting his life with Flavia Maxima Fausta in an alliance that intertwined love and imperial power in 307. But beneath the greatness lay shadows of tragedy. Accusations of disloyalty would stain the fate of Fausta and Crispus, leading them to an end at the hands of the emperor in 326. And in an even more unexpected episode, the council would reveal an unknown facet. Santa Claus, in an act of fervor, would also leave his mark. Imperial drama, hidden passions, and moments that defy time. At the Council of Nicaea, the future Santa Claus, Bishop Nicholas of Myra, starred in a legend of passion and miracles. Hearing Arius question the divinity of Jesus Christ, 
Nicholas, in a burst of faith, crossed the room and confronted the heretic with an unthinkable act, a punch in defense of the doctrine. This act of fervor cost him his position and freedom, for before Constantine, no challenge went unpunished. But the story does not end in shadows. That night, within the walls of his cell, Nicholas received the visit of Jesus and Mary, who returned his episcopal vestment. Amazed by the miracle, Constantine reinstated Nicholas, whose legend would transcend as the symbol of generosity and Christmas miracles, from defender of the faith to an eternal icon of kindness. In the fourth century, the Roman Empire witnessed a historic turn, the rise of Christianity from the shadows of persecution to the light of acceptance. Once marginalized Christians, resistant to pagan customs, found in the Edict of Milan of 313, proclaimed by Constantine the Great and his co-emperor Licinius, the dawn of a new era. This pioneering decree not only ceased religious hostilities, but also opened the doors to freedom of worship, catapulting Christianity into a golden age of expansion and open organization. In this context of transformation and tolerance, the Council of Nicaea stood as a beacon of unity and doctrinal definition, marking a before and after in the history of faith and the empire, a foundational moment that intertwines faith, power, and change. Before the historic Council of Nicaea, the stage was already marked by deep divisions. With Constantine's rise to power in 306, Arianism emerged defiantly, questioning the unity of nascent Christianity. Although Christianity had been legalized in 303 thanks to the Edict of Milan, co-signed with Licinius, it was in 324, after defeating Licinius and unifying the empire, that Constantine faced a crisis of faith. Alarmed by theological disputes, especially those promoted by Arianism, the emperor intervened, criticizing the division these small and insignificant issues caused among Christians. His concern revealed a vision, the unity of his empire must reflect in the faith of his people, laying the groundwork for Nicaea, an era of changes marked by the search for consensus and cohesion. The Council of Nicaea, held between May and July of 325, marked the dawn of Christian unity. In this historic meeting in Bithynia, bishops from across the Christian horizon converged under the patronage of Constantine the Great on a mission to weave consensus on the fundamental beliefs of the faith. Led by the visionary Hosius of Cordoba, this first ecumenical council laid the foundations for future doctrinal harmonizations, transforming into a beacon of spiritual guidance, a foundational moment where Christian diversity found its symphony of unity. The majestic entrance of Constantine into the Council of Nicaea, narrated by Warren Carroll and testified by Eusebius of Caesarea, was a spectacle of heavenly authority and earthly humility. Dressed in purple and gold, radiating a divine glow, the emperor presented himself not as a distant ruler, but as a resplendent servant of faith, placing the bishops ahead in a sign of respect. This act not only reflected imperial grandeur, but also underscored Constantine's reverence towards the gathered spiritual leaders, marking the beginning of a meeting destined to define the future of Christianity a moment where glory and grace converged, illuminating the path toward unity. The Council of Nicaea not only unified the faith, the faith with the creed, but also cemented the organizational foundations of the Catholic Church. Determining the celebration of Easter, essential in the Christian calendar, this council outlined the ecclesiastical structure in a network of regions and dioceses, granting preeminence to Rome, Alexandria, and Antioch. The leaders of these sees, elevated to archbishops or metropolitan bishops, marked the beginning of a hierarchy that endures. Additionally, it established clear disciplinary norms for the clergy and guidelines for handling apostasy and excommunication, reinforcing internal cohesion. This intertwining of doctrine and order makes the Council of Nicaea a fundamental pillar in the history of the Catholic Church, a legacy of unity and discipline for the faith. The mysterious selection of the sacred texts, a legendary episode attributed to the Council of Nicaea, but one that never occurred. Legend has it that, undecided among 270 scriptures, the bishops placed the texts under a table, hoping that, by divine intervention, the truly inspired books would be found on it by dawn. At dawn, only the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John rested on the table, chosen by a heavenly hand. However, this narrative, often linked to Voltaire for his critical wit, is a myth debunked by the Church, 
which clarifies that the canonization of the New Testament was a long and complex process, extending well beyond Nicaea. A tale of divine selection that, although captivating, is just that, a legend without basis in the real history of Christianity. At Constantine's call, an invitation was extended to 1,800 bishops from across the empire, seeking to gather wisdom from east and west. However, the rigors of travel and the limitations of the time meant many could not attend. Among those who did gather, figures such as Athanasius of Alexandria, Eusebius of Caesarea, and Eustathius of Antioch stood out, reporting a varied attendance that history consecrated in more than 300 souls. Socrates Scholasticus finally stamped this number in collective memory. Marked by tests of faith, Potamon of Heraclea, Paphnutius of Thebes, and Paul of Neo Caesarea bore the scars of persecution, while others like Macarius of Jerusalem, Nicholas of Myra, and Aristocles of Armenia joined this meeting of minds and spirits. A mosaic of resistance, faith, and unity at the heart of Nicaea. The Arian controversy ignited debate at the Council of Nicaea, centering the discussion on the divine essence of Christ. Originating in the doctrinal clash between Arius and Athanasius of Alexandria, this dispute delved into the depths of theology, the connection between God the Father and the Son. Arius argued that, although Jesus emanated from the Father, he did not share with him eternity, having been created at a point in time. This view challenged the accepted notion of Christ's divinity, marking a turning point in Christian history, where orthodoxy was compelled to define the unbreakable contours of faith. Nicaea thus became the battleground where the central doctrine of Christianity was forged. Arius presented compelling arguments in favor of Arianism, elevating the unquestionable supremacy of God the Father over the Son, proclaiming that the latter, being the result of divine will, was a creation not eternal in itself. He argued that, possessing free will and having begun existence after the Father, the Son could not be infinite, thus challenging the notion of a shared divinity on equal terms. Arius's followers leaned on the scriptures to bolster their vision, citing verses that emphasized the preeminence of the Father and the created nature of the Son, plunging Christianity into a passionate and fundamental doctrinal debate an interpretation that challenged the foundations of faith, marking a before and after in theological thought. The spark that ignited the Arian controversy dates back to the time of Alexander of Alexandria, under whose bishopric Arius launched the provocative idea that if the Son was created by the Father, then there was a time when he did not exist, thus emerging from nothing. This thesis, simple yet radical, not only challenged established notions about the divinity of Christ, but also unleashed a theological conflict that spread like wildfire from Alexandria to the ends of the empire. The turmoil reached such a magnitude that it disturbed the public order, prompting Constantine to personally intervene with letters of exhortation to the contenders, and finally to convene the Council of Nicaea in an effort to restore unity. A debate that marked a turning point in the history of faith, catalyzing a deeper definition of the nature of Christ. Christian Easter, initially intertwined with the Jewish festivities of Passover and unleavened bread, faced a crucial debate, to follow the Jewish calendar or to forge its own path. This dilemma, simmering before the fourth century, found its resolution at the Council of Nicaea. The decision was historic. Christian Easter would emancipate itself, adopting a date that would always fall on a Sunday, aligning with practices already established in Rome and Alexandria, regardless of the Jewish calendar. This change not only reaffirmed the unique identity of Christianity, but also unified its celebration under new regulations, marking a pattern of independence and cohesion, a milestone in the evolution of Christian tradition. Malachius of Lycopolis, known for his severity, clashed with the mainstream bishops willing to reintegrate the penitent. His historical role intensifies for having ordained Arius, the seed of Arianism. At the Council of Nicaea, efforts were made to reconcile with Miletius and his faction, but his death, two years after the council, did not seal the hoped for peace. The followers of Miletius, the Miletians, aligned with the Arians, persisting as a dissident group until the 5th century. A legacy of divisions and challenges that underscores the complexity of the early Christian centuries a figure at the epicenter of controversies that would resonate through the ages. 
The Council of Nicaea marked a milestone in the history of Christianity with the creation of the Nicene Creed, a powerful manifesto of faith designed to affirm the full divinity of Jesus Christ against the Arian claims of his subordination. This fundamental declaration, articulated with clarity and firmness, established for the first time a universal creed, emphasizing the unity of Christ with God the Father. Although it faced modifications in subsequent debates, the essence of the creed, confirmed at the Council of Constantinople in 381, remained unchanged, rejecting any view that diminished the divinity of Christ. With each word, the creed outlined the contours of Christian faith against heretical interpretations, sealing a legacy of orthodoxy and unity, an unbreakable proclamation of faith resonating through the ages. The Council of Nicaea became the setting where the church merged with state power, transforming both the religious entity and the Roman Empire. Arius, along with 18 Arian bishops, saw the majority of their allies align with the opposing stance, motivated by the fear of repercussions from being at odds with the victorious faction. Eventually, Arius and the two loyal bishops were exiled by order of Constantine, and the empire took severe measures against Arian writings, including their destruction and the death penalty for those who possessed them. This council not only sealed the fate of Arianism, but also cemented the alliance between the church and the state, heralding an era where Christianity, once persecuted, would become intimately intertwined with imperial power. A radical change that outlined the contour of medieval Europe in an age where faith and politics were indissolubly interwoven. Constantine, often revered as the first Christian emperor, might not have been as devout from the start as tradition suggests. His conversion to Christianity seems to have been strategic, adopting the faith as the cement that would unify a Roman empire fractured by internal tensions. Intriguingly, Constantine received baptism only on his deathbed in 337, having sponsored Christianity and its institutions without having formally adhered to one of its fundamental rites. Despite this, his Christian legacy is undeniable. From the legalization of Christianity to the realization of the Council of Nicaea and the erection of iconic temples, his influence shaped the religious landscape of the empire, leaving indelible marks on the history of faith and the ancient world. In an ironic twist of fate, Constantine, the emperor who had led the fight against Arianism at the Council of Nicaea, received baptism on his deathbed from the hands of Eusebius of Nicomedia, a well-known Arian and distant relative. Despite having been exiled by Constantine due to his defense of Arius and his initial reluctance towards the Nicene Creed, Eusebius returned to imperial favor by moderating his stance reflecting the complex relationship between power and doctrine. This final act in Constantine's life, being baptized by someone from a theological current he had sought to eradicate, suggests to some historians that the emperor's conversion may have been more an act of political convenience than of spiritual conviction, seeking above all the unity and stability for his empire. As we delve deeper into the narrative of Nicaea, we encounter a web of paradoxes that challenge traditional perceptions and interpretations. The Council of Nicaea, a pivotal moment in history, has always been shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Now, as we reflect on the complexities, we see that it was not merely a religious event, but a political maneuver. An event that was supposed to be about faith was riddled with political power plays and strategic alliances. The figure of Constantine himself is a paradox. Revered as the first Christian emperor, his actions suggest a more complex reality. His conversion, it seems, was more a strategic move to unify his empire than a spiritual awakening. This is evident in the fact that he was baptized only on his deathbed, and interestingly by an Arian bishop, Eusebius of Nicomedia. Despite having led the charge against Arianism, it was an Arian bishop who administered his final rite. This stark contradiction raises questions about the nature of Constantine's faith and his motivations behind promoting Christianity. The Council of Nicaea, thus, serves as a mirror reflecting the intricate interplay of religion and politics. It is a testament to how power can shape beliefs and doctrines and how faith can be wielded as a tool for political control. The Council's legacy is not just theological but also political, giving us a glimpse into the machinations of power in the ancient world. 
As we wrap up our journey into the fascinating world of Nicaea, we are left with more questions than answers. The Council of Nicaea, Constantine, and the paradoxes that surround them continue to intrigue scholars and history enthusiasts alike. It remains a historical enigma, a puzzle that we are still trying to piece together. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the past. Don't forget to follow us for more intriguing insights into history. See you in the next video.